Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec, and in this video we're going to be going over Cutie Capped. So let's get started here. So first off, what is Cutie Capped? Uh, it, it's a tool that was written by Bjorn Horman, and he describes it as a cross-platform command line utility to capture WebKit's rendering of a web page into a variety of vector and bitmap formats. And you can see I've got listed out there all of the different output types that you can save your uh, images of. So basically it's just a program that you can use to take screenshots of a website and then save it. Uh, maybe you just want to you want to have a quick view of a site without actually loading it up in a browser. So CutieCap gives you the ability to do that quickly. And on the surface it looks like it's a pretty simple tool but there are actually quite a few options that you can set with it. So before we actually get into the program, I just wanted to briefly cover a couple of things here. First of all, whoops, uh, what is WebKit? WebKit is a browser rendering engine, which means that when you request a web page with your browser, the rendering engine takes all of the underlying HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript, and formats that information and then displays it to your screen. And you know, WebKit is just one of the many rendering engines and each browser has a specific one built into it. So for example, Apple's Safari browser uses WebKit while Chrome uses one called Blink. Uh, Firefox uses Gecko, and Internet Explorer uses one called Trident. And if you want to learn more about these, I'll have some links down in the, the description below, and you can check those out when you get a chance. So now that we've kind of gone over the basics of what CutieCap is, let's go ahead and take a look at the options that are available for it. So I've already got... Um, you can see here in the background I've got the help screen loaded up but as always in Kali when you want to launch a program there are a couple of ways you can do it first of all you can go up to applications and cutie capped is going to be under the reporting tool section so you go to reporting tools and then cutie cap here and you could also just pull up a terminal window and type in cutie capped to uh, get the help contents displayed so let me come back to my little document here. So the first thing that you need to know is in order to use the majority of the options that are available to you, you've got to have a basic understanding of what happens when you make an HTTP request. Uh, you should know things like uh, what info gets sent in the request, uh, understand what changing the user agent can do, and uh, what changing the HTTP methods can do and, and so forth. And that's a lot of what the options are for. It allows you to change the way the request is sent to a site and by changing those things you can affect the return, uh, the data that gets returned to you from the web server. Now, let me scroll back up here. Um, with the, with the list of options, I basically broke it down into two different categories. You've got uh, options that are for basic program functionality, and then I've got one called uh, the options that affect how the page is returned to you. So you can look under the first section, the basic program functionality, and that's going to include things like um, you know the tag tag URL where you specify your target URL that you want to look at. Uh, the tag tag out is going to be where you name your output file and type. And, and you can look through the rest of these and see. Uh, you can specify a minimum width and height for the image. Uh, the maximum wait time. You can tell it whether or not to print backgrounds if you're saving as a PDF. Uh, if you want to zoom the page in as you save it or maybe you just want to zoom only on the text and if you're using an HTTP proxy. The next category of options are where you can change the uh, information that gets sent in the request that, that QtCap sends to the web server. 
so you can you can specify if you wanted a maybe a custom CSS file loaded uh, you can change the actual header information and with this option you can actually specify this more than one time on, on the command line um, because if you are familiar with what an HTTP request looks like there are multiple options you've got host information you've got the actual get requests uh, user agent strings and so forth and you can change each of those uh, when you run QD capped uh, the HTTP methods that are used uh, by default QDCAP is going to use a GET request to request the website but you could change this to a POST method and sometimes with websites if you change what their default HTTP method is you may get a, a, a maybe an odd response back from the web server so you can switch those back and forth and see you may get a different version of a page back a, a, some kind of an error page that maybe gives up too much information more than what the administrator would would like to give up uh, you can specify the app name for the user agent uh, you can change the user agent that's sent and we'll we'll be going over this all as we get into actually using the program uh, you can specify whether or not you want JavaScript to be enabled, uh, whether you want Java to be enabled, uh, plugins such as maybe Adobe Flash, uh, specify the private browsing, and a couple of other JavaScript options there. All right, so now that we've gone over the options, let's go ahead and put them into action and see how this tool actually works. So the first thing that we're going to do is just a basic screen capture. And the syntax is just going to be, uh, we'll do QD capped. We're going to do a tac tac URL, <coughs> excuse me, equals. And <coughs> I'm just going to do American Airlines here. So we'll do www.aa.com. And then do a tac tac out equals, and I'm just going to call it aa.jpg. We'll hit enter there. It'll take it just a second. Now you can see that we don't actually get any message or anything telling us that it's finished. We just come back to a command prompt. But if we do an ls for this folder, you can see that it's actually created that file. So we can use the display command to open that file. And you can see there it has taken a screenshot of the website. So we'll just close that. And that's, that's pretty much the basic functionality of QDCAP. But now let's get into looking at some of these other options and manipulating the data that gets sent to the web server uh, through the request and see how that affects the output for us. So if we go ahead and clear the screen again. This time we're going to change the user agent that gets sent. So why would you want to do this? Um, a lot of websites, when you visit them, you're going to see by default the regular website that comes up. But if you're viewing the site on, say, your phone or a tablet, some kind of a mobile device, the, um, the web server may have a separate page for mobile devices and it's going to look different than what the normal page is. This can be a discovery phase. Um, maybe your client has told you, you know, they give you their their main website address but during discovery you find out that there's a mobile version of the page available and sometimes that mobile version of the page could have security weaknesses in it that maybe the normal page doesn't have so it's always a good idea to check for these things and see if they exist. So to do this one here, we're going to do a QD capped tac tac URL equals and same URL tac tac out equals and I'm just going to call this one AA user agent dot JPEG. And now we're going to specify the tac tac user agent equals and I've got one. I've got a sample one. We're going to use the user agent for a Samsung Galaxy S5. Oh my 
make sure I got all that copied. Well, that's not very nice. I'll get it here in a second, guys. It's a little bit early for me. All right, so we copy that. And one thing you'll want to remember, you need to put that user agent inside of quotes. So we'll paste that in, put the end quote, and then hit enter. All right, it looks like it finished. Do an LS again, and we can see that that file was created. So if we do a display AA user agent, and now you can see we got back a completely different looking site here. So that tells us that there is a mobile version of the site that's available. And you could take this one and start going through it to see if there's any security issues with it. So let's close this out. And now let's look at one where we tell it to disable JavaScript for the page. So a lot of websites use JavaScript to display certain things or for certain functionality on the site. So if you disable JavaScript, the page is going to behave differently than if you just left it as default. So let's clear this out again. And the syntax this time will be cutie cap. Of course, we're always going to have this one. Tag tag URL equals aa.com. Tag tag out equals aa um, javascript. Just so I'll know that that's what it's for here. And then now we're going to specify the tech tech JavaScript and we're going to set it to off. So that should disable JavaScript from running on that page. So we'll just hit enter again. LS, the, f the file was created. So now if we do another display JavaScript. And now you can see again that the page looks different than the original page that we got back. So you can see that disabling JavaScript had an effect on what the page looks like. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of how QDCAP works and how you can manipulate the way sites are displayed using some of these options. Uh, like I said earlier, you need to have an understanding of how HTTP works, how the requests are sent, the information that's sent in that request, and how if you modify any of that data, how it can affect the way the web page is displayed back to you. Uh, if you want more information about, say, uh, the user agent strings or HTTP requests in general, I'm going to have some links in the description below that you can visit when you get a chance to. And if you aren't familiar with what an HTTP request looks like, you can view these either in an intercepting proxy like Burp Suite or uh, simply just fire up Wireshark and look at the tra traffic going across the wire. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and appreciate you guys watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.